In this video, I'm going to be showing ADC conversions, analog to digital converter conversions, from channel 1, which is this potentiometer's location on the microcontroller, and it will be showing its output on the LCD. The difference between this implementation of ADC and the previous one is the previous one did single conversions and it was polling in a loop. In this implementation, I'm going to be using interrupts, so we don't have to continually poll the ADC in the while loop. Instead, the microcontroller is going to know when the conversion is ended, and it can go to another part of the program to show the contents of the ADC, the data register. So let's see how we can do this. Let's start by creating a new project. We're using the F030R8T6 chip. Click on New Project. And I'm going to name this one ADC Interrupts. Click Finish. Now we can add the libraries that we need. And the first library we're going to use is the kubelib, which also includes the CMSIS core. And we also want to include the C library because we're using the LCD. Okay, we don't need the repository anymore. And we can go ahead and double click the, the main.c. Let's go ahead and add the libraries that we need. So we'll be using the LCD, so we'll go ahead and add that file. And since we're using the ADC, we'll go to the ADC tutorial and grab the ADC file. So now we have all of the libraries included that we need. Let's go ahead and add the include files. And the first one is going to be the one for our chip, the stm32f0xx.h file. We'll include the, the LCD file, LCD functions. And the last file that we need is the ADC file. Before I continue, let me explain a little bit about interrupts. You can think of interrupts like an intention grammar for microcontrollers. So far, you've seen me use the while loop. The while loop will run these instructions over and over again, infinitely, while there's power going to the microcontroller. You may actually have many instructions within this while loop. And the while loop will continually run these instructions and it'll start all the way back over again and continue going. This is probably fine for most circumstances, but with microcontrollers, a lot of these instructions cause the microcontroller to stop until this instruction has cleared some kind of flag. For instance, the ADC EOC, the EOC end of conversion flag, has to be true to continue on to the next instruction. So the microcontroller is actually stuck at this location, waiting for the, the end of conversion flag to be set, and nothing else after this can be run. There could be really important operations happening after the waiting of the end of conversion flag that the microcontroller will never see until that end of conversion flag is finally set. So when programming, it would be good to only add the important operations that need to continually execute within the while loop, the never-ending loop and let the microcontroller execute the interrupts when it thinks it's ready. The way this works is that when the, the while loop is running these operations, so let's say it's, it's at this particular operation right now, and then it's about to go to this operation, and then it runs this operation, and then right before it gets to this operation, the EOC flag, or the end of conversion flag for the ADC, is set. So what it does is it goes to the ADC interrupt function, and it processes all the ADC code that you need it to run. When you get to this particular point within this interrupt function, you'll already have the number in the data register, and you can use that number however you need within this particular interrupt. But as I mentioned in the AVR series, it's, it's best to keep this portion of the code, the interrupt code, relatively small. So what you can do is you can take this data register information and you can put it into a variable, a non-volatile variable, so you can use it in the main code where you have the important operations. So when this code is complete, it will go right back to where it stopped processing and then continue and then go all the way back to the beginning again and do all of the operations until it sees the end of conversion happen again. Just to drive this idea home, while in the while loop, it'll execute the important operations and it'll, it'll go back to the beginning and let's say the EOC happened here, end of conversion. It'll go to the ADC interrupt. When it's done, it'll go right back to where it left off. It'll do the next operation. And let's say it happened again here. It'll go back to the interrupt and it'll go back to where 
it left off and it'll continue over and over again. Let's say it happened right here and it'll go to the interrupt, come right back to where it left off and then go back to the beginning and start all over again. So it doesn't matter where in the while loop it happens, where it'll pick up the ADC interrupt. It'll go to the ADC interrupt and then go right back to where it left off in the program. This is one of the coolest things you have with microcontrollers because you can have some incredibly complex code within the while loop controlling um, a very sophisticated robot or whatever device that you are creating. And the microcontroller has a separate process that considers interrupts, whether it's a timer interrupt, an ADC interrupt, an external interrupt or a software interrupt. It can handle that as a separate process and then remember where it was in the never ending loop and continue exactly where it left off. So let's go back to the code and see how this works. Before we go to the code, let's add the components to the circuit. We'll start with the potentiometer, going to pin number 15. Connect one leg of the potentiometer to the positive rail and the other leg of the potentiometer to the negative rail. Make sure you have the programmer plugged in. You'll be ready to flash when the code is complete. So this is our never ending loop here. And this is where our important code is gonna be. The microcontroller is gonna continually run this while the microcontroller is on. As you know, it first executes whatever is before the while loop. So we're gonna be doing our initializations for the LCD and the ADC here. And inter interestingly, we're not gonna actually put any code in here at all because when you're using interrupts, you can have code in here, but what we're doing is we're only going to be converting the ADC value and executing that within the, the interrupt function itself. So we can add code into the while loop when we want it to do other tasks. Let's go ahead and put the initialization code in and we'll put in the ADC initialization code. We won't have to make any changes to this initialization for the ADC. If you look at it, we're doing the calibration, we're setting the clock, which is required for the interrupt, and we're enabling it, and we're creating a specific sample rate. We also have the channel select, so let's go ahead and do that. And we're selecting channel number one, which is where the potentiometer is located, or will be located. And I wanna go ahead and see if this code works, and I can Click on the build, but first I want to make sure that my HAL configure file is in the correct place. And I found it a little bit of an easier way to do this. Click the right button on the project, click on add files, and we want to go to the workspaces and go to the ADC interrupts. And under the ADC interrupts, you see components, Kukok master, the kubelib, and we want the file, the conf.h file from the test folder and we want to put it into the source folder. This is an easier way to get to this folder instead of having to find it using the, the Windows File Explorer. And now we should be able to build the file without any errors. The first time you're building the file, it's going to take a little while because it has to create some new, some new files from scratch. But the next time you do the, the build, it shouldn't take long at all. And it was successful, so let's continue on with the programming. In the ADC code we did previously, we did it in single conversion mode, which means that we had to start the conversion. That would be AD start, setting the AD start bit. And then we wanted to wait until the EOC, the end of conversion, is set. And this is the kind of thing we don't want to do. We don't want the microcontroller to wait for anything. We want the microcontroller to continually go and, and do important code in here and not have to wait. We want this to be done in, in another part of the program. So this is what we did before. And then what we did is we used the contents of the ADC data register. And this would happen over and over again. It would continually do these this set of code over and over again, always convert. It would, it would convert, then use the ADC. It would convert, use the ADC, convert, use the ADC. And that is called polling. We're polling the ADC. So instead of doing single conversion mode, let's go ahead and make it continuous conversion mode. So it'll always do it by itself internally and always convert without us having to pull it. And to do that, we need to access the ADC configuration register and set the CONT bit. And the CONT bit, we had, we didn't set it. So it automatically went to single conversion mode before. So in this case, we want to put it into continuous conversion mode by typing ADC1, accessing the, the configure, configuration register, and we're gonna set the bit for continuous conversion mode. Now we need to enable the interrupt. We have to tell the configuration, the ADC, that we want interrupts to be enabled. 
which is located in the ADC IER register, the interrupt enable register. And we have a few choices. We have the EOC IE, which is the end of conversion interrupt enable. And we have the EOSEQ IE, which is the end of sequence conversions interrupt enable. We also have the, the OVR IE, which is the overrun interrupt enable. From my current understanding, this is the EOC, which is single conversion mode, or single conversion, which doesn't mean it's it's single or continuous. It means that it's going to do a single channel. And if you have the EOSEQ, which is a sequence, it is going to convert, it is going to fire, the interrupt will fire when a sequence of conversions is completed, which means a mul multiple channels are finished converting. So you can process all of the channels at one time in this interrupt. And the EOC, EOC IE, this is the single channel, which means that it, it only fires for every single channel that you have invoked for the analog to digital converter. So if you have two channels, this will fire twice so you can process each conversion separately. And if you have this one set, it, and you have two channels, you're, you're receiving conversions on two channels, this will fire only once, and you can take care of all the channels at one time. The overrun is if there is a conversion happening, and in the middle of that conversion, another conversion wants to start. So this will fire if that happens. I'm not going to be using this one, but I will be using these. And since I only have a single channel, I'm going to be using this one in this particular tutorial. So the, the register is the IER register, and we're setting the EOC IE bit, the end of conversion interrupt enable. So when the interrupt has completed, it'll go straight to the function that handles that interrupt. We're at this point, let's go ahead and put in that function, and that is the handler, the interrupt handler. The name that is used for this interrupt handler is very important because if you don't name it exactly this, it will not find it. When the microcontroller fires the interrupt for the end of conversion, it's going to find itself within this particular function. So let's keep this here and get back to it after we do some more setting up for the, for the ADC. Now there are two more instructions we need to add, and that has to do with the nested vector interrupt controller, the NVIC which is actually a part of the CMSIS core library. We have to add the NVIC functions because all of the interrupts are handled by the NVIC. The two instructions you'll need is the N NVIC, enable IRQ, and we're gonna be using the, I the ADC1 IRQ N. You notice that when I was typing this, let's go there again, You'll see the comp IRQ, and you have the the one without the comp. And if you use the comp, all it does is it defines this anyway. So you don't you can put in the comp if you want, and it'll do the same thing because it's just going to replace the comp with IRQ N. And if you look at what the IRQ N is, it is just equal to the number twelve. That's it. You could actually put the number twelve in this spot and it'll do the same thing. Let's go back to that. So let's put on the next one, N, V, I, C, and this one is gonna be setting the priority. And we're gonna put the same IRQ N in there, and we're gonna set the priority to zero. And I don't have any other interrupts going on around here, so I can, I can use a zero here, but you wanna change this number to what priority you believe that the multiple interrupts will have. And since I'm only using the ADC, I'm gonna put it to zero, but if I was gonna say, set the timer interrupt or, or other interrupts, I could change the priority of these interrupts. And the last thing we need to put into the beginning of the main is we need to start the ADC. Just, just like we were doing in the while loop starting it in the while loop. We're gonna do that outside of the while loop because we're doing it in continuous mode. And we're just starting in the continuous mode so it continually goes. 
over and over again. And the ADC, the ADC start is located in the control register. So now that we have it configured properly for continuous mode, interrupt enable, and we're setting the NVIC interrupt functions, we can go ahead and start putting the code into our handler. And in our handler, I'm just going to simply set the LCD, set the cursor location, because we're going to be, you know what, let me put in the, the initial thing we're displaying. Let me take that out for a moment. We're going to send two lines, no delay, and we're just going to put ADC on the top and nothing on the second line. So at this at this position here, we want to set, put the number of the ADC, the value of the conversion. So we'll set the, conv the cursor location first, and it's one, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. So I'll put it 5, 0. And we'll send an integer. And the integer to be displayed will be the ADC DR, the dotted register, because we should have that since the conversion has been ended or completed. And the max length, I'll just put five here. Should only be four digits, but I'm gonna add one to it just in case. Let's go ahead and build the project and see if it still works. We have no errors. Looks like I have an error and it says ADCDR. I forgot to put the one after the C, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's try it again. Looks like I have another error. What is that one? And it looks like I have uh, an issue with the NVIC set priority. It looks right. Oh, you know what? Priority, okay, I forgot an R here. Let's put that R in. It almost looks like it's correct. Okay, now let's try it again. Okay, no errors that time. So let's go ahead and flash the microcontroller and see if it still works. Okay, the microcontroller has been flashed. So let's go ahead and see if it changes. It looks like it's working fine. So now that we've tested the microcontroller and we know that it's working. Let's go ahead and go back to the code and put this code in the .h file for the ADC. So I'm going to open up the ADC and I'll make another function called set interrupt mode. And I'm not going to be bringing anything in, I don't think. So let's just set our code block. And we'll take all the information from or that we just created. Control X, cut, and we'll bring it into here. And I wouldn't be putting the continuous mode on unless I was using the interrupt at this point. I can't really imagine how I'll use it later, but at this point, I think I'm gonna set it this way just so it'll be easier to put into the main program. I also probably wanna set the non-continuous mode when I'm just doing standard pulling ADC conversions. So I want to take all of this out and then I want to use the and not to make sure that this is a zero. So it unsets this particular bit. So it's in single conversion mode. So I'm going to call this polling mode. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And in our main, we can just use ADC set interrupt mode. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this and see if it still works. We have no errors, so let's flash the microcontroller. Okay, the microcontroller was flashed. Make sure it still works, still works. So that is how to use the ADC with interrupts and a general explanation of interrupts. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead. You can do it. Click it.
go ahead and also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh no, that's not me. Oh yeah, and go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.